see the mighty hand of God using the evil things to do good for God's glory and for the salvation of thousands of people. Maybe after I finish my message, we will have more time to share about what is happening right now in the Arab world, especially in the Middle East. Let me uh, take you to uh, one of the, my favorite uh, passages in the New Testament, the book of Hebrew, chapter 13, starting from verse 11 until verse 14. Four verses, but it, uh, it brings a lot of insight and understanding of the secrets of the kingdom of God. It's a small passage, but illustrates and demonstrates and tells us a lot about how we walk with God how we defeat the world, how we change the world around us. The high priest carries the blood of animals into the most holy place as a sin offering. But the bodies are burned outside the camp. And so Jesus also suffered outside the city gate to make the people holy through his own blood. Let us then, let us then, this is the fact and then the application. What to do with that? Let us then go to him outside the camp. Every word here has a, a very profound meaning. Let's go to him outside the camp, bearing the disgrace, the shame that he bore. For here we do not have an enduring city, but we are looking for the city that is to come. Here there is an, a great analogy between the day of atonement, where the sacrifice is completely different than other sacrifices. Most of the other sacrifices being offered inside the temple, inside the the city gate, inside Jerusalem, inside the world. But this is special sacrifice given once every year, done by the high priest himself, this sacrifice should be slaughtered outside the city and the blood taken into the most holy place as a sin offering for the whole nation, for the whole people. And the body of this sacrifice will be totally burned. The other sacrifices, the priest will take part of the sacrifice. The guy bringing the sacrifice will take part of the sacrifice. But this one is completely different. It will be slaughtered outside the city. The blood will be taken into the most holy place. And the whole body will be completely burned. What to do with that? What kind of a message? What kind of a calling here? Where is the analogy between what Jesus did and what the Jews used to do and the application of that? This is exactly what has been done with Christ himself. The Lamb of God. The sacrifice the atonement of the sins of the whole world, not one nation. He was taken outside the city gate of Jerusalem and was crucified as a total offering, burned completely for the sake of our salvation. And here we can see two important things. The total sacrifice and being given outside the city gate. And we have been called to go to him. To go to him, the total sacrifice, based on his agreement, based on his way of dealing with us, and go to him outside the city gate because he himself is there 
outside the city gate. Let's take the two ideas, Hina, one after the other, because a lot to be learned from that. The first, the total sacrifice. Jesus gave it all to us. He gave everything. Not part of what he has, but he gave himself as a total sacrifice to everybody of us. So the idea here of total giving myself to others is what we call the idea of covenant. To understand the difference between covenant and contract will let us see the big difference and how we usually deal with God on a different understanding of his way of dealing with us. In our land, we understand this maybe more clearly than you. Marriage in the Muslim world is a contract. They say that. It's a contract between a man and a wife. We as Christians, we believe that it's a covenant between a man and a young lady or a lady. What's the difference between covenant relationship and contract relationship? First of all, God is interested only in a covenant relationship, not a contract relationship. Do you remember with Abraham in the beginning of the covenant relationship? God made a covenant, not a contract with Abraham. The same thing in the Last Supper. Jesus took the cup and said, this blood is the new what? Covenant. What's the difference between covenant and a contract? Number one, the percentage of participation. In any contract, you may share with 40%, 60%, and the other may share with the rest. Or it can be three of you, it can be four. This is why the Muslims, they believe a man can marry up to four ladies, because it's a contract. Because always in a contract relationship, it's a partial participation. You will give some of what you have to be part of the deal. But in a covenant relationship, it's completely different. It's the total sacrifice. I give it all. It's 100% participation from my side. So, if you want to have the same covenant with me, then you have to participate with what? Zero. No, with 100%. It's an exchange of ownership. I give it all to you, you give it all to me. Then it's a covenant relationship. In a contract relationship, I give some of my heart to God. I give some of my time to God. I give some of my life to God. It's, it's partial. And sometimes in marriage we do the same. I give some of me to my wife. And this is why it's no more the God's plan for marriage. This is why the second uh, 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 difference between the covenant and the, the contract that in a contract at any time you can tear the contract. You can cancel it. And will be a, a, a penalty for those going to do that. You will pay so much because you canceled the contract. But a covenant is completely different. Covenant is for life. A total commitment for life. It's not partial participation. It's not for a time limit. A few weeks ago, we had um, a program, I, I don't know if you know it, the Marriage Encounter. And it was the first time that in our Marriage Encounter program to invite three Muslim couples to attend a Christian program. And they were very happy to attend. We were very reluctant. We were very um, uh, not... not certain what's going to happen because it's it's a christian uh, program we told them it's a christian we will preach the gospel we will take verses from the bible if you want to come please come they came and to our to for our surprise by the end 
a lady uh, uh, of one of these couples stood up to share, and in her sharing, she said, I have learned two things. First, forgiveness is very essential. Without forgiveness, you can live a happy life with your partner. And we don't have this, but we have learned this from you. The second thing, marriage is not a contract, because in a contract, it has to be based on an expiratory date. I have been married to this man 15 years. I thought this is enough. I asked him to divorce me several times because enough is enough. <laughs> but I have learned here that marriage is a covenant. It's completely different. Jesus, give it all to me. I have all right to have him totally, 100% of his love, 100% of his power, 100% of his wisdom is mine. Can you imagine that? 100% of his love, 100% of his power, 100% of his wisdom is mine on one condition, that 100% of me will be his. We as Christians, what we do in marriage, we take a ring. And we write our name on the ring and put it in the hands of our spouses. Yes? For a symbol of what? From now on, I'm yours. Totally yours. My ring is in your hands. You have me. Do whatever you want with me. <laughs> and her ring will be in my hands. It's a total exchange of ownership. Otherwise, it's not a covenant. It's a contract. And many of the Christians, born again Christians, they live with Christ now based on a contract relationship. I give part. If I'm happy with that, I will give more. If you will bless me, I will give you more. If you will stand with me, I will give you more. And actually, we cannot enjoy the relationship with Christ unless we give it Everything in me, all my dreams, all my wealth, all my talents, because from now on, it's not mine, it is his. The total sacrifice idea. The second principle to learn here is outside the camp. Jesus was crucified outside the city gate of Jerusalem to fulfill the idea of the atonement, this special sacrifice, but for more than that, much more for that. He is right now still outside the city gate. Let's go to him outside the city gate. What do you mean by that? In, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 19, John is telling us a secret. We can see this secret in the modern Hollywood uh, movies, in the movie called Matrix. Did, did you see this Matrix before? How many of you? Can I see hands? Okay, I have no time to explain to you the idea. <laughs> but is, is, this movie is exactly what John said here. We know that we are children of God. And that the whole world under the control of the evil one. The whole world is under exactly the picture of the matrix. They think they are free. They are not free. They think they do what they want to do, but actually they, they do what the artificial intelligence, what the evil one is asking them to do. They became puppets. It became a video game. We are not more, we are not anymore free. But though in Zion, living in freedom, the children of God, they are really free. We are totally different. Those 
in the matrix of the world, in the matrix of the world, under the control of the evil one. There is a ship here. The evil desire of the man, the fallen nature of man, there is something wrong inside of me, controlling me. With a remote control, the evil one is taking me wherever he wants me to be. But we are the children of God. We are outside the matrix. <laughs> we are not under the control of the evil one. We have different software. Completely different, different software. Let, let me summarize the difference here in at least two main points. The software of the evil one, the software of the world, built on selfishness and pride. And this is what John said in his epistle that this world based on lust and boost. Lust, whatever you see, whatever you need, you want it for yourself. You live for yourself. You live to satisfy your needs. You live to satisfy your ambition. You live for yourself. You are self-centered, selfishness. In everything you do, you do it for yourself. You marry for yourself. You bring children to life because of yourself. You work for, you do everything for yourself. Selfishness is the cornerstone of the matrix of the world. On the other side, the cornerstone of the kingdom of God, the big flag, number one value, love. Love your God. Love your neighbor. Love your enemy. What? In a talk show during the Muslim Brotherhood's uh, regime in, in Egypt, they interviewed an Islamic imam and a pastor from a Christian church, actually from a Coptic Orthodox church. And the imam said, what kind of a religion is this to ask me to love my enemy? This is ridiculous. This is absurd. This is, this is impossible. No such God to ask me to love my enemy. My enemy should be hated. And if he's infidel, I should kill him. How can I kill somebody that I, li I love? And he said, I have been ordered by the Quran to hate those they don't believe in Muhammad as the prophet. And the pastor on the other side said, I have been ordered by Christ to love you. You cannot mix the two softwares together. No any similarity. It's completely based on a different mindset. Let's go to him outside the camp. Let's go to Christ. If you want to follow Christ, we have to be outside the matrix. We have to be free from the mindset of this world. Selfishness. Actually, we have been called to deny ourselves and to carry the cross and to give ourselves to people. Jesus said that which is completely against the mindset of the world. It's more blessed to give than to receive. How come? If I have a hundred dollars and you give me a hundred dollars, then I have two hundred dollars. If I have a hundred dollars and I will give it to you, then I have zero. How come? How come blessed to give more than receive? Of course, receiving much better than giving. This is the mindset of the world. But in the kingdom... You will be more blessed, you will be more happy when you give what you have, when you bless others. When you make others happy, when you make your wife happy, when you make your children happy, when we sacrifice what you have, you will be blessed. Let's go to him outside the city gate. The second basic 
principle in, in the software of the word pride. The sin of Adam. The sin of Lucifer. The origin of all sin in the world. Arrogance. Boosting of what I have and of, of what I have achieved. My intelligence, my money, my car, my home, my job, my status. I, I want to achieve to boast. I look down to people. I feel jealous from those that are more important than me. I fight to prove myself. This is the software of the world. Arrogance. On the other side, <laughs> in the kingdom of God, humility. It's all about humility. God, the word of God, the son of God, humbled himself and became like a slave. And here in Philippians chapter 2 verse 3, do not do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Wow. I envy others. And now you are asking me to consider others more important than me. Humility. Humility will reconcile people together. Humility will let us live with one another in peace. Arrogance will lead us to fight one another. What is happening right now in the Middle East is a war. It's a religious war. They don't want to say that, but it is. <laughs> it is. It is a war to control. It is a war to take advantage. It is a war who will sit on the throne, who will control the Shia or the Sunnah, the Khalifa or the king or the president. It's a war for authority. And this is the mankind all the time. He boasts the power seeking authority. But here, in this passage, let's go to him outside the camp, bearing the disgrace, the shame of the cross. Not boasting the power, not to kill, to domain, but to sacrifice, to live life to others. My brothers, my sisters, it is impossible to follow Christ and we are still inside the city gate, inside the matrix. We need the renewal of our mind to dedicate our heart 100% I'm yours, Lord, and this is not enough. I have the renewal of heart, the covenant relationship with him, that to love my God with all my heart. But this is not enough. I need to renew my mind, to delete the software of the world, to go outside the matrix so I can follow Christ easily. Learn from me what to learn from you, Lord. A humble and gentle heart. Then my yoke will be easy and will be light. The third and last. I have three minutes. Okay. <laughs> Verse 14. In doing that, we will see something different. For here we do not have an enduring city. But we are looking for the city is to come. For here we do not have an enduring city. This world, this earth, this planet is not our permanent home. We have another permanent home. We have the new Jerusalem. This is our home. And Jesus said it 
many times clearly. In John 17, in his, in his prayer, he said it clearly. My prayer is, is not, that, not to take them out of the world, but they, that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world. Exactly like I am not from the world. They are not from here. This is not my home, Abraham, with all the wealth that he had. He lived in tents. Why? Why tents? Because he's a stranger. He is traveling across the world, traveling across the time, going to the permanent home, going to the permanent city, going to the real city, the heavenly one. The illustration that I want to, to put in front of you. We are living like in a train. Those belong to the kingdom. Traveling in a train across time and space. Across time and land. And in every... Uh, from now on, from time to time we stop at a station to bring more people into the train. And to go on. And then stop to bring more people to the train. Until the train will be... Fall and then no more stopping, no more. No, we will, we will reach the end. What I mean by that, we are here for one thing. We came with nothing to the world. This is exactly what Paul said. And we will take nothing out of this world. Nothing. Yes. But we will take children with us. We will take people. You cannot take your car or your home. But you can take people that you have brought them to Christ with you. This is the only thing you can take. Is your basket is full of people? Or your basket is empty? Can you, in the, in the day when you meet Jesus, to tell him, here am I and the children of God <laughs> given to me. Or, sorry Lord, I'm empty-handed. We are in a mission. We are just traveling across time and places to bring people to Christ. That's all. That's the joy. This is the fulfillment of the mission. This is the only thing we'll take it with us to eternity. Would you stand with me? Just for one minute, meditate. Is your relationship with him is a covenant or a contract? Is all what you have owned by him, registered by his name, belong to him? Do you love him with all, all your heart, all your mind, all your strength? Or you kept things for yourself. Are you inside the matrix of the world? Or you downloaded the software of the kingdom of God? Love and humility. Are you strangers bringing people to the kingdom? Traveling across time and places? Or you live your permanent home here. Lord, open our eyes and ears. Lord, speak to your church and your body these days to be awakened, to live the covenant, to demonstrate the kingdom in values, to bring the lost back to the kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Sine. Pastor Sine, you can stay right here, brother. Um, for those watching online, we're really grateful that you tune in each week, but we're going to go dark right now because we're going to ask Pastor Sime just some questions that he can speak openly about the Middle East, which would 